So let's talk about fast pay hotels in terms of, so you jumped out of obviously low cost. Yeah, so about two years, a year and a half before low cost eventually disappeared. I was, um, you know, I was a COO there. It was, it was going great, but um, I'd learned an awful lot. I'd, I'd taken an English, a British business um, and we'd launched it in 50 countries. We'd launched about four or five brands at the time. I'd opened about 12 offices. And it was getting interesting, but um, at my interview with Low Cost, I walked into the interview with the CEO and I had a picture of a house. And I said, there's no reason I should leave Expedia. And he said, no, no, you've got to leave. You've got to join me. This is the most amazing journey of your life. And I said, well, I want to buy this house when I leave, the day I leave Low Cost. And it had a massive price tag on it, right? Yeah. And he said, what are you going to do with Low Cost? He said, well, one day we're going to sell it. And I said, fine, well, do me a deal, pay me a salary, but I want to walk out and I want to be able to buy this house without a mortgage. And my wife and I really love this house. Otherwise, I'm going to stay with the Expedia. And he went, great, let's do it. So, so I was vested into the possible sale of the business. Right? Mm. Um, now, what you don't know when you go into these situations is, is that you really have no power over this whatsoever. It actually, you know, they can give you anything you want, they can take it away. Frankly, it doesn't really matter. Mm. But it's a nice thing to have on a piece of paper because it makes you feel like you're more involved in the business and, mm. you're, and you're more invested in it, which is great. Um, I realized at some point that I wasn't going to be able to buy the house off the back of low cost. So I said, if I am going to want to buy that house, um, probably not there anymore. But uh, you know, at the time, uh, I really needed to go and set up on my own. And as you develop within your role at low cost, I realized, do you know, I actually know quite a lot of people. I've actually learned quite a lot of things. I've actually taken a lot of risks. I've actually made some really big bets. Um, I've actually got a really, really good team here. In fact, people who probably follow me uh, to the next place. Um, and one of those people uh, was Elodie, my co-founder, uh, my co-founder at FastPay, who I'd brought from Expedia to low cost and convinced her to move to Mallorca. And then um, from low cost, um, we were in a taxi in Madrid and I said, I've got this really crazy idea for this new idea. And she went, that's the worst idea I've ever heard. And I said, and I think we're going to call it. Uh, and then uh, about three days later, I said to her, do you know, I've gone, I've registered the URL. And she went, go on. And I said, I've called it Quick Pay Hotels. And she went, that's a terrible name. I said, I like Fast Pay Hotels. And I said, that's the other URL I, 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 I bought as a, <laughs> a, 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 just in case. And she went, great. And then that was kind of a weird moment for the two of us. But that was someone I'd learned to trust and become a, a, obviously a very good friend. Um, and the two of us had, had an idea and, and off we went and set up and set up Fast Pay Hotels. But um, you took, I took lots of risks at low cost. And I said, these are coming off. Now I want, from now on, I think I, can want, I want to take off more risks. Um, and I had this idea and I, and I went in and I said, listen, I want to go. I want to set up my own thing. Um, can I buy one of the businesses at low cost to get me started? And they went, are you mad? Who do you think you are? You can't buy it. So in the, I think in the May, I went over and I said, look, I, I, I found some capital. I said, We'd like to, I'd like to buy this business off low-cost holidays. And they said, no. And I said, well, look, if I can't buy something and I'm not going to get my money, you know, and I can't buy that house, um, I'd like to, um, I think I'm going to go. Well, what are you talking about? Let's talk about it. And then my wife said to me one morning, listen, go in and quit today. And I said, but we haven't done the business plan yet. I said, uh, and we haven't got the money and I haven't found the investors. And she went, look, you're not going to find it unless you quit. And I said, what are you talking about? Just quit. We'll work it out later. And, uh, and she gave me the push. And she said, I'm here. We're fine. Um, so I went in one morning and said, I'm out. Here's my resignation letter. And they went, what are you talking about? And I said, I'm out. And I walked out. I said, I have no idea what happens next. Um, and, and off I went. And, uh, and, and then eventually I set up my own business. But I needed that push. I did need that push. because, um, and, I needed, and then at that time, I was a daddy. Yeah. I was a husband, you know, the level of risk making uh, changed. But to have someone in your family say, listen, just go for it. This is miserable. Um, go and do something that, you know, you're not happy doing this. Go and do something. And I did. And, uh, uh, and I had a co-founder, um, Elodie, who, who, you know, who gave me a really hard time. And she's, you know, polar opposite to me. And, uh, yeah, and having a partner is, is obviously something, a business partner is something I've never had before. And, um, you yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic opportunity. Yeah. I love that because what, what, what strikes me is, is you and Julie as a team, as a unit. And yeah, it's okay, you know, it's, you're the one that's setting the business up and fronting the business. But you cannot underestimate, can you, having someone in your life, both either a business partner or a life partner, that is there saying, you know what, I love you anyway. Um, it'll be fine. Yeah. How bad can it be? Yeah. But 
don't life's too short to be unhappy doing what you're doing and therefore the time is right so just go and go and do it and i'm with you all the way no matter what happens yeah and i think and i think um i was lucky with that because clearly both my wife and my business partner were, were we both you know and and um you know we as, you know the two families we almost went let's do this yeah which, which was great um and don't underestimate it i mean there's a lot of startup um it's incredibly difficult yeah. it's, but there's nothing you know what one of the real moments i think where you realize that is in the first year operations we couldn't afford anyone in the evenings to pick up the phone calls mm. so what we'd have is we'd have a mobile phone call for operational issues that we had uh, we sell hotels um hotel rooms to travel agents and at uh, fast hotels and sometimes guests will arrive at hotels and there's no reservation so um the phone would ring at about three thirty, four o'clock in the morning and i would i can sleep through anything and my wife would nudge me and go phone 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 so you pick up the phone, you go, Fast Bay Hotels Operations, how can I help you? <laughs> and it's the best Western in Portland. Uh, see, see how, uh, you know, and they call you and they go, we've got a guest here, but the credit card thing won't go through. Can I have a new credit card number, please? Otherwise, I'm going to have to charge the guest. And you go, one second, please. And you put on your <laughs> nicest voice and you do that. And you go, you know, I, so literally, and you think, you know, six months ago, I had uh, two PAs. I was re- receiving 1,200 emails a day. I was managing 12 offices around the world. <laughs> you know, a 500 million business, and today I'm trying to find a credit card, uh, credit card slip for a, for a, for a 69 dollar business at the Best Western in in in, Seattle, in Portland, and and that is startup, you yeah. know, and it's incredibly beautiful and glamorous, and there's you know lots of very cool podcasts and and, and lots of literature, but genuinely, that's what you go to, and we did, we we mortgaged the house, we did the credit card debt. We didn't sleep through the nights. Mm. Um, that is it. I remember New Year's Eve, uh, no, about 28th, 29th of December, we were in Scotland with my wife's family and our biggest customer switched us off because they felt like it. Um, and I just got on a plane and spent New Year's Eve by myself, uh, and which is miserable. You know, if anyone's ever spent Christmas and New Year's Eve by themselves, <laughs> no one ever plans to do that, right? No. But you spend New Year's Eve by yourself because you know you need to be in the office sorting out these issues. and. Uh, there is some, I mean, those are real, real examples of, of, of setting up a business, but you can't do it. I've, I don't think I could have been able to do it without my co-founder, uh, without my family support, because those are really lonely moments. I mean, mm. really, really tough. Yeah.